we got all the uh, hoops and casings off there. And uh, you can see these tires, I can't believe they hold air, honestly, that all four of them hold air. So now we're gonna take it to the uh, tire machine and break them down. And I'm probably going to sand and paint the inside of the bead because uh, you leave that rust and it's gonna leak down. I'm really kind of worried about them leaking down even if I do do this, so we'll see. So uh, when we drove it around the yard there, um, after hitting the brakes several times, this caliper has locked up. So we got all the parts uh, here finally from it. We ordered them. They came in from Rock Auto. You know, it looks a lot better now that it's cleaned up, all that mold and junk off of it. Uh, I would love to see what this thing would look like if you buffed it because I think it could look, uh, I think this paint would come back around pretty good if uh, you buffed it. I'm not sure if the customer's gonna want me to do that. So, we got, uh, we got new belts, we got new hoses, um, we got uh, all the brake hoses as well, heater core, um, new front calipers, new wheel cylinders, new master cylinder, uh, we got a bunch of stuff, so we're going to start putting this junk on here and getting this thing on the road again. So you take the bolt out of here, and then this little guy right here comes out, and that's what releases the caliper to come off. This there. caliper is froze up on there. This is the one that messed up. Oh, man. I've got a really big problem on this. Is not wanting to move at all. Off there. I'm gonna just take the whole thing off. There we go. Man, that thing's stuck. It doesn't know with the wheel bearing. You tighten them down, not super tight, but tighten it down decent, and then you back it back off just a little because you don't want. You don't want it to be tight. You just want it to uh, be all the way bottomed out and a little loose because your cotter pin is what is actually gonna stop it from backing off there. So as you can see here, the problem of the old one is the piston is stuck out. That's why it was so hard to get off there because uh, you know there's probably rust in here. So we got the new one. You can tell which side you got because the side the bleeder screws on. A lot of times calipers are interchangeable, but you'll have the bleeder on the wrong side on the bottom. You'll never be able to get the air out of it. So just make sure your bleeder's on the right side. We got the other side done now. So we got both the front brake hoses replaced, both the front calipers replaced. Uh, she's wanting to save as much money as she can. So we're gonna leave the old rotors and, and brake pads for now. Uh, we went ahead and repacked the wheel bearings while we had it apart. So now we're gonna, we still gotta do the front master cylinder. We're probably gonna do that next. Now that we got the front brake stuff done, we're gonna replace this wheel cylinder and uh, brake hose in the back. So got new uh, Ray Bess's wheel cylinders off Rock Auto. So we're gonna work on that. The brake line loose and the two mounting bolts loose. I got my brake tool here. I'm gonna try to get these uh, springs off of here. to relieve the pressure so I can get the uh, new wheel cylinder put on. We got a hardware kit, so we got some new springs we can put on here too, as long as it's the right ones. Looks like we got the correct wheel cylinders. So we're gonna push these little guys back in the ends of this and pop this on there. So we got that back together, got the new springs on there. The new uh, wheel cylinders on there. Maybe you can see that. Probably not. Got the line hooked up and bolts in it. So we're gonna do the exact same thing the other side. Well, this one's froze up solid, rusted. So we're gonna heat this up and see if we can get this brake line to come out with some heat. Now we're replacing this uh, back brake line here. That, that, uh, brake line came loose and the one up here that connected to this came loose and the little thing with this one 
is not. So it looks like we're gonna have to maybe heat this one up too. And we still haven't got this uh, wheel cylinder line loose yet. So I'm probably gonna let this stuff soak overnight and come back to it. And scratch what I just said, I got impatient and heated this up a little bit with the uh, little propane torch and got the line loose. So we got the new one, they look the same. Just the new one's better. I'm gonna get this guy on there. So I finally got this brake line off. We let it sit for a couple days and it was still what didn't want to come off. So I heated it up with the little map gas there and then uh, ended up having to put vice grips on it. And that's finally how I got out of there. It was really stuck. Then once I took these brakes apart, I figured out that this cable right here was broke. And I guess it's been that way a long time because the adjuster got way out of adjustment and it's wore out this back brake pad or brake shoe. So it looks like I'm gonna have to put brake shoes on that on there and get this new cable. So we gotta get that stuff coming. But I'm gonna go ahead and put this guy on here for now. And then we'll probably go to the engine and put new belts and hoses on it. Oh yeah, we didn't miss the bucket at all. <laughs> so we got the old nasty rotten hoses off there. And we got the new ones from Rock Auto. So we're gonna put them on there. I may end up replacing the clamps as well if they look bad. We're gonna do that. And we got belts here. Look how loose this old rotten belt is. Bloop, bloop, bloop. It wasn't, didn't seem to be squealing though. So we got two belts in there we need to replace. Probably gonna do them while the uh, hoses are so off. So we got the alternator belt off here. It's in terrible shape, as you can see. Um, and the new one's the wrong size, so I gotta get that. And here's the inner one for the power steering, water pump, and crank. This one appears to be the right size belt. This new one. You can see what kind of shape his belts are in. So we're gonna replace this inner one, and then we'll have to go get another one for the uh, alternator. So we got the new inner belt on for the power steering. Uh, the second belt um, was actually for the air conditioning. I didn't realize it until just now. So we got the new belt for the air conditioning. I can't put it on until we get the one the alternator on. Issue there is somebody has deleted the smog pump, so it's going to have to be a custom length belt. So I'm going to take the old one, the part store, and get a new belt for that. Got the new upper radiator hose on. Got the new lower hose on. Was able to reuse the old clamps. So we're going to fill it up with antifreeze now and uh, figure out about those brake parts. Well, we got the new uh, brake shoes on there. Uh, man, I hate doing drum brakes. They just take forever. But got the new hardware, the new wheel cylinder, the new shoes. Uh, we ordered this little cable that, that snapped. So we're gonna have to go back to town to pick it up. But uh, got all them replaced. So now we're going to, uh, oh, we also got the belt done. Show you what that belt was. But we ordered, a, we got a belt for it on the alternator because the smog pump, like I told you, this is the part number you end up being in case you guys need one, in case you want to take your smog pump off. So now we're probably gonna start working on uh, the gas tank. Now we're gonna hopefully drop this tank. It's got two uh, studs that hold the tank straps up. They're 15 millimeter. It looks like we might have a bird's nest or something up there. But uh, we're gonna hopefully get this tank down. Uh, I'm sure since we're having to drop the tank, it's probably absolutely full of gas. Because uh, that's the only way I've ever done it. So let's get right I just in. noticed that uh, this thing has a fuel pump that's not even wired up. Uh, I'm not sure why that's there. Why it's not wired up. So we gotta check into that. So it's a half inch on top. Got it off there. Let's see what this does. Oh, it doesn't feel like it has gas in it. We might be lucky here. It's not heavy at all. Yeah, 
Yeah, it doesn't have much of nothing in it. Maybe we can just dump it out and reuse this tank, hopefully for her. Well, there ain't no reason really for the jack. It's not going to weigh nothing. Got the wiring off, got the vacuum line off. I'm just going to cut the fuel line if I can because it ain't no good anymore. We'll do replace that anyway. It was not a bird's nest, it was just a bunch of pine needles. Oh, the filler neck. I'm going to have to get a screwdriver up in there and do the filler neck. Well, that's kind of funny. What? Look at this. It's an egg. That better not be a snake egg. Sitting up here on the transmission. <laughs> First time for that. Oh, it's so dirty. So I guess all the gases either evaporate out of it or somebody siphoned it out or ran out of fuel. I don't know. So I'm going to spray this uh, sanding unit down because this ring's all rusted up from years and years. So we'll let that sit for a minute and we'll try to send you out and see what the inside of the tank looks like. See if we gotta buy one or not. All right, we got the lock ring loose. Uh, uh, smells like old gas. <laughs> that looks like it's still intact. Let's see what it looks like down in there. Mmm. It's got some junk in it. Got some trash. But, oh, maybe we can salvage it and not have to buy a new one. So, I'm just going to take this section out here. It looks like, I mean, to me, it looks like somebody's cut this fuel line and put this aftermarket fuel filter or fuel pump in. So I'm gonna take it out and just put a piece of rubber hose in its place because, you know, the mechanical fuel pump was not working. So I don't know if somebody just put this on here to keep from having to change the mechanical pump. I'm gonna take this section out, put some new rubber line in and uh, we're gonna go with that. After much struggling, we finally got that thing out there. Getting the filler neck hooked up and clamped was really hard. We got the new fuel line in place like you saw there and uh, got the gas tank uh, flushed out. Gonna put this hose right back in here and gonna put an inline filter up there to catch the trash before the pump and get some gas in this thing and see how it does. There we go, got the fuel filter in line here so we can see how much trash is in it. I like those clear fuel filters and also has the factory one we talked about in the last video. So uh, now we're gonna get some gas for it and get our little brake cable we gotta pick up and put this thing back together and see how it runs with the factory fuel system. We are uh, got some new gas for it now. We're gonna put like 10 gallons in it, start it up, make sure it's pulling fuel through that filter. I'm gonna let it run for a minute, see if it uh, runs all right on the factory tank. And we might pour some uh, of that uh, engine treatment stuff through the carburetor. Well, we got the new cable. I think it was only two bucks for two of them at AutoZone. So we got the new cable installed. So hopefully this won't wear brakes out like it did. It just wore this one out before. So we're gonna put the uh, brake uh, drum back on and start this thing up.
it's been a few days. We got the rusty old wheels cleaned up. Still got a little bit of pitting around the bead that worries me they may lose air, but we'll see. Got the new casings put on there. Uh, Walmart took care of us there, putting the casings on. Only charge us 110 bucks. Can you believe it costs that much to get four tires put on and balance? Anyway, so we got the new brakes, like you know already. We're gonna get these new wheels and tires on and uh, drive this thing. Well, back from the first test drive, it did all right. Um, has a little few things. The brakes are shaking. You know, I didn't replace the rotors, so I guess uh, the rotors were warped already. And uh, I knew it had an exhaust leak on this side. You can hear it ticking pretty good. And uh, it was right on the valves pulling hills, so I'm gonna lower the ignition timing a little bit. Um, but aside from that, I mean, didn't overheat. Uh, seemed to do good. It's getting fuel, so we're going to do a little tweaking on it and uh, get this oh. thing done. The uh, vacuum advance was pointing over this way. We gave her a little bit of this right here, and uh, that made it start easier. So that's retarding the timing on the Ford, and this is advancing. So yeah, just a little bit of this. I know I need to do it with a timing light, uh, so I may need to check that here in a minute. I'm also going to adjust this transmission kick down deal. Um, it's shifting just first, second, third immediately when you take off. So I'm going to loosen this right here and uh, loosen that and slide this down some to basically make it act like it's got more thrall than it does and see what that does. Back on the road. Oh yeah, it shifts a lot later, a lot harder now. this hill before it was really rattled the valves hard pulling the hill trying to go in too high of a gear oh no it's good now they really like that timing and transmission adjustment there 